Last week, Cassius took on the combined fright and might of the house robots to join reigning champions Roadblock in the second of our series semi-finals. One more contender will join the cause from today's Robot Wars. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Dame Vera Lynn of Robot Wars, Craig Charles. Life is full of little aggravations. Taurus who has to way to Leicester Square. Open-toed sandals with white socks, David Hasselhoff. And over the course of the week, these aggravations grow and grow until you're saying to yourself, the next person that pokes me in the eye with an umbrella will get it shoved. All right, I'll calm down. Some people turn to therapy. Some people turn to jelly. Some people turn to mechanical killing machines and fight it out on robot wars. Of course, the nice contenders don't just vent anger, they vent fumes. Let's get cathartic. First, from Hornchurch in Essex, King Buxton. Low and flat, the second fastest in the heat at up to 80 miles an hour. It has four-wheel drive, can flip upside down and still run effectively. It's protected by a three-millimeter thick aluminium shell. The movable titanium spikes look dangerous for the joust to come. From Rushton in Northamptonshire, Robodog. Looks like a World War I tank. The tracks have embedded spikes, helping it to climb 600 millimeter high obstacles. The lifting arm can hoist 70 kilos. The front-mounted knife can cleave and chop. It cost a thousand pounds and took four months to build. From Beverly in Yorkshire, Prometheus. The chrome effect aluminium has a mirror finish. Matilda can admire herself in it. Ugh. Prometheus has an angle grinder at the front, a forklift at the rear. The motors come from the cooling fans out of scrapped cars. Six months of work went into this from Nigel Seeley and Sarah Burton. From Torquay, Rottweiler. It may growl and prowl, but its top speed of 10 miles an hour is the slowest in the heat. Its high ground clearance of 50 millimetres could leave it vulnerable to a flip. Its shell is 5 millimetre thick, and the hardened steel spikes are 15 centimetres long. I wonder if Rottweiler's bark is worse than its bites. From Edinburgh, all talk. I hope they're not. Certainly the two 750-watt engine power, steel angle iron chassis, galvanised steel mesh and aluminium body and go-kart wheels promise strength and speed. Two large steel spikes and grinding wheels say a lot about its potency. I wonder if we'll be speaking highly of all talk later. From the University of East London, Cruella. Philip Martin and girlfriend Michelle Wheelie say its structure is its strength and main weapon, complemented by a six-inch circular saw powered by a Ford Granada windscreen wiper. The chassis is steel, so is the bodywork. Two Sinclair C5 motors provide the drive. Let's go back to our chauffeur, Craig. Six fine lumps of metal. But one lump of metal is going to get bitter and quite definitely twisted at the end of the first round. This is the gauntlet, featuring every instrument of torture known to robot. Three horrible courses to choose from. The first featuring this, the medieval pendulum and the flame pit. In the second, you face annihilation from the sphere. In the third, the all-knowing, all-seeing sentinel and worse, the pit of oblivion. Which would you choose? Robot ears, stand by. First to the gauntlet, King Buxton. Take the top off. I'll show you inside. We've got quite powerful motors, 750 watt motors. Um, this is part of our lifting device. Speed controllers, which we've built ourselves. Um, four wheel drive, chain drive, and quite a large reservoir of batteries. Three, two, one, activate. And I'll need all those batteries, whichever way they go in the gauntlet. Providing they know how to steer the thing, that is. Simon Harrison, Phil Brett and Steve Monk. Come on, boys, steer the thing. There's the ramp. With the barrels on top, up onto the ramp now. Ooh, and off it again. Well, a slightly circuitous route, this, against the tank trap. There's the ram rig ready to squeeze, and Matilda and the sphere rolling away. They've done enough to push the sphere away. Now can they get beyond Matilda? Sparks fly! They do go beyond Matilda. In comes Killalot now, and Bash with the flame. Killalot seems to pin them down there. Matilda comes in from the rear. Killalot's Lance doing the damage. That has proved so effective in Robot Wars. Matilda with the chainsaw. Killalot with the pincer and the Lance. You can see the scratches and dents in there as well. The wheels spin. No traction, though. Not a bad run, but have they done enough? King Buxton. Not far from the end zone. 
No, no, I think we're not going to be able to polish those scratches out. But, uh... Oh, you did take a bit of a bashing from Matilda, yeah, didn't you? Yeah, did. He seems to have a bit of power as well. He didn't, he couldn't push you back too much. Oh, we've got power. We've got power. When we get it under control, it'll be interesting. OK, power to the king. King Buxton! Will the king rule the roost? They think so. 10.6 metres is the benchmark. How sprinty you were in there. I mean, you sped down that side bit, didn't you? Well, that's a little mice. We feed them lots of cheese. Yeah. They run really fast. Yeah. So that's oh, why we don't take the top good. off. They escape. So. so will they need to have a seat now, those little mice? Probably. Yeah. yeah they the must be exhausted yeah. after that. But they were very brave. Mm. Mm. And mm. so were you. Thank well you done. Robot ears, stand by. Robo Dot, the next to take on the gauntlets. At the front here, we have a. Deadly spike for attacking other vehicles, which lifts up. Down here we have a cleaving blade for chopping open other robots. At the back we have two one horsepower motors, which drive the tracks, and the electric motor for the arm. It's all made out of aluminium. It's very strong, very light, and we hopefully get through to the final. Three, two, one, activate. And generate. One horsepower with the engines within Robodoc. Matilda comes to meet and greet. They shake a few hands, avoids the spike. This is a strong run by Robodoc. Can they get beyond Bash and kill a lot? The gauntlet is so difficult. There's Killalot's camera. I wonder what effect that deadly spike will have now. You can hear the engines roaring. I wonder if they can get up and over Bash with those spike embedded tracks bashing there with a flamethrower show two kilolot hoisting them in the air oh but look kilolot's on fire kilolot's a flame robo docks in the air i wonder if they've done enough and what punishment to kill a lot well how heavy is that thing about 80 kilos Coach, you seem to get picked up quite easily by to kill that, didn't you? Yeah, it's a lot more powerful. A lot of weight there in to kill a lot. Mm -hmm. Very powerful beast. Think you're doing enough to get through to the next round? We hope so. We hope so, yeah, we hope so. Give them a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Robo Doc. Let's see if they've done enough on the leaderboard. Robo Doc went three of a metre ahead of King Buxton. Robot ears, stand by. Prometheus with the mirror finish. The forklift is driven by two electric windscreen motors. Like so, to lift the opposition. The actual robot is driven by four electric fan motors off a Mark II Cavalier. Three, two, one, activate. I just see a bit Cavalier in his approach, one might think. But steady so far. Up the ramp. And again, rather curiously deciding against the ramp. Having gone up there, turning, twisting. Change of mind. Nigel and Sarah Burton there. Little bit of burst of speed. Blocked by the Sentinel, whose deadly spike crushes in. One bash and two, and it gives Killalot time to close as well. Back you go is the message. Prometheus being pushed and shoved. Pushing back, though, itself. Driven by those four electric motors and turned up, bounced. Early progress disappearing as it teeters towards the brink. A promising run, it didn't come to much though in the end. Prometheus, come onto the platform. Well, you managed to stay out of the pit. Yeah, just, just about, yeah, oh dear. <laughs> Why did you change your mind? Because you went to the seesaw and then sort of... Well, yeah, I was... I was tempted to distract him. I was hoping they'd go that way, then I was a quick round and go that way, but they're, they're faster than you think, aren't they? Are you trying to use speed as your ultimate yeah, weapon? Trying to that like, but it didn't go. It didn't work at all. Yeah, they're too good. You think you've got enough to get through to the next round? Mm, no, nah, I don't know. I don't know. Not very good like that. Not happy. Hey and gentlemen, give them a round of applause. <laughs> Prometheus. Trying to outfox the house robots. No, are you sure? Only 6.8 metres for Prometheus. Robot ears, stand by. Rrr, Rottweiler. It's called Rottweiler because my surname's Rot. And it's got a dog collar around the edge. It's 
inside it's got two 24 volt wheelchair motors and two 12 volt 18 amp batteries wired in series. On the circuit it's got servos that activate some switches for each motor separately. Three, two, one, activate. 12 year old Dominic Rott and Dan Ferner is a chef. What can they cook up here? Plenty of spikes, plenty of weaponry, <laughs> plenty of spin. I think Werner has been spinning Dominic a yard to say they can go beyond Matilda. We thought that 50 millimeter ground clearance might be a problem if Matilda could get in there. Also the sergeant's circular saw. Matilda seems to be having a problem of her own here. Wedged against the ramp. Kill a lot closing in as well on Rottweiler. Rottweiler, bit of a puppy, really, so far. Oh, look at this! Eek! He's enjoying it. Oh, look, toothless. A toothless Rottweiler. Rottweiler. Hello, young man. Well, you made a dog's dinner out of that, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> I thought Rottweiler's had some bite. It should have done, but I just got caught on the ramp and fell down. And then all the house robots came behind me and I got stuck. Yeah. But I did get Matilda stuck. You did get Matilda stuck, which is good. It's always good to be positive, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Do you think you've done enough to get through to the next round? I'm not sure. We'll have to wait and see. Ladies and gentlemen, Rottweiler. Cheers, guys. Splendid enthusiasm from Dominic Rott. Unfortunately, only 3.5 metres, a lot of rot. Robot ears, stand by. Next up, Cruella. Cruel fortune for them in the last war. To shove it into one of the patrol zones or against the spikes or against the grills. Oh, that's suicide, surely! What on earth is Philip Martin doing? He's on the grill. He won't get out from there now. We've made several improvements to this war. We've got a circular saw played, powered by a windscreen wiper motor and a new body shell. Underneath, we've still got the same 12-volt Sinclair C5 motors powered by a single battery. We've got casters, which we can actually adjust to change the height of the wheels. Three, two, one, activate. Is it just me, or does that circular saw motor look very vulnerable sticking out of the back there? Philip Martin, splendid driving. Straight into the ramwood. Now against the circular saws. Taking on that stainless steel and sheet steel bodywork as Bash comes crunching in. They don't seem to be able to get a clear run down that side of the gauntlet. The sphere comes rolling down. They're going to go back and maybe go down the central route. That's the ramp. No, Killer Lot's blocking that. Indecision here from Cruella has cost them dear. Spinning like a maddened top. And Killer Lot nudging it back towards the ram rig route. Really going nowhere fast, and they know it. And I wondered if that was vulnerable. Killalot seen the same thing. Killalot, oh, the sparks fly! Grinding, punishing, penetrating, piercing, punitive. Pathetic. Cruella. I don't think you're going through. Well. That, that was disappointing. I got jammed up against that block and it was difficult to get a straight run through there. Didn't go to plan. You're very quiet. Um, I don't want to say. You don't know what to say? You're a bit upset? A little bit. Well, I don't know if you've done enough to get through, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, Cruella. Oh, Michelle, so much hard work, but look at the end product, only 1.9 metres. It does mean young Dominic's through, though. You're through. You're definitely through what? to the next no. round. Am I? Yes! Yes! Um, yes! <laughs> Robot ears, stand by. Let's see if all talk can make it too. Yeah, inside, two big batteries at the front, two big motors either side, uh, four-wheel drive uh, and a computer control. Three, two, one. Has the potential to be the fastest robot in the field. Straight against the ramp. No one's been up and over successfully. And avoiding the house robots. This is a good surge, though. The 
Two the blocks. There's Killalot with the camera. They're trapped on that barrel, really. They've got to get off that barrel now. Bash and Killalot and Matilda. They're trying to burn the motors out. The wheels are still spinning, though, on all torque. They can't gain torque and traction quick enough to speed beyond the house robots. Time ticking down. They've done enough, though. They're surely through. Can they avoid punishment? Is there smoke? I can see there. There is smoke and flame. They're in trouble here. What damage has been caused? Well, that's a bit of a problem there. You were on fire. We laugh at fire. We laugh at fire. It's only wood. Did, did you think you're going to have enough time to get it all back into ship shape? Yeah, I should manage that. Yeah. It's a fast thing, that, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Lots of power. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, all talk. Yeah. All talk, but no conversation. <laughs> all talk, 11.2 metres. Sadly, Cruella, go out. It's Cruella, team. Sadly, we've got to say goodbye to you. Yeah, we'll, we will be back for the next war and we'll be much better. We will win. <laughs> Bigger and better than ever. We will win. Robot Doc, is it all going all right in there? Yeah, we're just getting ready for the next event. We're going to put some bigger sprockets on there, give us more torque over the gels. We're using silver foil here for all torque. Why? They uh, tipped us up and burnt all our wires inside, so we're going to wrap this round up next time and uh, hopefully survive a bit better. One robot has been axed. There'll be one put to the sword in the trials. Now, the Knights of the Round Table protected King Arthur with their lives. If someone called the King names, or tried to steal his pigs, or brought his daughter home with a smile on her face, the Knights were there to protect his honour. But alas, the Round Table is now mere legend, and we don't joust for honour. We do it for sadistic tea-time entertainment. Still, there's nothing wrong with that. Our five remaining robots will joust Matilda. If they can survive the initial blow, it's a battle to see who gains the most ground. The robot who puts in the worst performance will be thrown off his horse. So, hey, let the trials begin. Robot ears, stand by. Three, two, one, activate. King Buxton, the first to take on Matilda. Very nearly driving straight off the ramp. Matilda in underneath King Buxton. Look at the smoke there. There's been damage caused immediately to the motors. And off it goes. Well, you can see the scarring and the smudge of smoke there on the front. Meter damage. 6.95 metres. Robot ears, stand by. Three, two, one. Robo-Doc Captain Mike Franklin's building a hydro-jet-powered surfboard. Slightly faster than this. Robo-Doc flipped up, but it won't matter. The tracks can roll this robot upside down. Matilda, good attack there. But Robo-Doc hanging on. You can see there the traction from the tank tracks. The clock ticks down. They've done enough. They've survived. Not quite the distance of King Buxton. 6.1 metres achieved, that. Robot ears, stand by. Three, two, one, activate. All talk costs nearly £2,000 to build, and it's money well spent. Driving in effectively against Matilda. The sparks fly from Matilda's nostrils. And all talk pushes the house robot back. She tries to block the ramp route. This is a tremendous run. Go on, all talk. One push, one ramp. Oh, something's come off. It's the complete toy, Matilda. Matilda pushed away, yes! All talk victorious. All talk 13.6 metres. A complete run achieved. Robot ears, stand by. Three, two, one, activate. So Prometheus comes to the Japs. Oop, you've got to get up on that ramp, actually, Nigel and Sarah. You're not going too far. And Matilda senses it. Back from whence you came. That's a disaster. Prometheus, come off the platform. Oh, dear. 
Well, that's a kind of nil point. Isn't it? Yeah, we sort of expected that. Uh, what, 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 why do you expect that then? Uh, we just haven't got the power in the motors. To, we, uh, to get up the incline? To get the in incline there, uh, we're, we're weighing the power. You're looking disappointed. We expected it when we saw it, like we thought, uh, we're going to have problems here. And we have. All right, guys, give them a round of applause. <laughs> Prometheus. Pushed back by Matilda. Minus 2.1 metres. Disaster. I knew it was going to be hard, but I didn't think we were going to be annihilated. <laughs> Did it go into minus figures, really, didn't it? Yes, <laughs> just slightly. But, well, am I? Robot ears, stand by. Young Dominic, you haven't got much to do. Just go forward and you're through. Three, two, one. Activate. Surely they'll go through here, Rockweiler. Or will they? Yeah. Steering problems. Oh, dear. He's got major problems. Matilda is enjoying this. The spikes won't help Rockweiler here. Cease. And his bark was worse than his bite. Get back to the kennel. For the Rockweiler. Minus 2.8, they're out. I mean, I know one of us had to go out, and I'm glad it was us that stayed in, but... Do you know who I feel sorry for? Who? Dominic's dad. <laughs> oh, no. He's going to get a really hard time, isn't he? Oh, he is. Are you cross with him? No, not really. You're not going to shout at him, are you? No. I think it's actually slipped on the plaster. On the way up. On the way up, there's a bit of plaster, but I think it must have slipped on that. And then the shoulders came down, smashed me into the floor. <laughs> well, it's good to see you still laughing. You're not too upset, are you? You've done really well. No, I'm not upset. Robodoc is doing something really technical with a computer downloading software or something like that. And um, the King Buxton team! I don't believe they actually made that robot because I've only ever seen them polish it in the pits. But come round and have a look at this traction and see why All Talk won that so resoundingly. It's all in the bushes. These rubber things here, this is bent absolutely as destroyed, but it's all the delicate stuff is just sitting there, nothing happened. There you are, exclusive technical news from the pits. <laughs> but as Julius Caesar found out, the higher you climb, the more people want to see you dead in the arena. Normal rules apply. Kick the robot's teeth in or immobilise him. If there's no clear winner, a decision will be made by our panel of judges. They'll be looking at style, control, aggression and damage. Let's get stuck in. The first semi-final. Robodoc against King Buxton. Robot ears, stand by. Three, two, one... Activate. King Buxton is the quicker, lighter and smaller robot, as you can see, by a long chalk. Those titanium spikes look dangerous. This is good mobility, this is good style, this is good control, and it's pushed Robodoc into the PPZ, the perimeter patrol zone and dead metals, pincers and the circular saw. Out they go. Done well to get out of there, and now Robodoc itself comes in on the attack, trying to get the lifting arm and the spike underneath the flip. King Buxton almost turned up itself, though. There's Kilolot's camera. Also, Shunt coming in with a pickaxe. Damage sustained by Robodoc. Flipped up. You can turn it over, as we've said before, and it'll still come back. Look at the spike on the front of the lifting arm. Now King Buxton wheels and spins. Trying to get back at Robodoc. Avoiding each other. Oh, my goodness me! Robodoc nearly went into the bit of oblivion and Matilda's going to push him back there. Time is running out. Robodoc heaves back at Matilda. Again, he's turned up onto its head. Over the flaming bit. Charcoal Robodoc. It goes to the judges. They think they've done enough. Spectacular fight. We have to rely on our panel of judges. And whilst they decide, let's see some highlights from that fight. Right at the start, good mobility by King Buxton, getting away from Robodoc, pushing it into the perimeter patrol zone. Robodoc on the retreat from Shunt and also King Buxton in underneath. There's damage sustained, you see, from Shunt's pickaxe. Almost flipped onto its side. Now, that would have been a problem. Matilda veering it towards the pit, just surviving. Who has won this great tussle? Well... The decision has been reached by our panel of judges. It was such a spectacular fight. It's such a pity that one team's got to lose. But the judges have gone for King Buxton! <laughs> Robotoc, as you see, 
We did a bet. It was a great fight. It, it was a great fight. It was a fantastic, fantastic. fight. Well and your robot was designed so well, because even when it flipped, it got a bit more effective because the spike was lower. Yeah. But the judges went with them unlucky. Yeah. We, we loved that fight. We loved it. One more fight and you're through to the series semi-finals. Excellent. You can't feeling, wait. Are you feeling confident? Feeling good now, aren't we? Yeah. yeah Ladies and gentlemen, give them a round of applause. King Goodstein. The second semi-final, all talk against Prometheus. Robot ears, stand by. Three, two, one. Activate. All talk, the faster and heavier the robots. Prometheus on fire, it would seem, in that engine area. Is that just a flick of flame? I think it is. It's smoking as Altor nudges Prometheus towards the pit of oblivion. Prometheus with the forklift in the rear. Altor will have to avoid that. Dead metal coming out of the PPZ. Look at the damage sustained on the side of Prometheus from earlier on now! The circular saw has gone! And into the pit of oblivion goes Prometheus! Prometheus, come onto the platform! Auto, come onto the platform! Well, Prometheus, the Greek god of fire, and it was you that ended in flames. Yeah, it looks like it. We got this far. We've enjoyed ourselves. It's been brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Give them a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Well, Auto, how are you feeling now? Really good. About to get through. Looking forward to the next fight. Yeah, do you think you're going to make it to the series semi-finals? Yeah, I hope so. You hope so. How about you? How are you feeling? Good. Pretty hard fight ahead. You though. don't look very excited. I am. Good. Give them a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations. And so to the final. King Buxton against All Talk. Robot ears, stand by. Three, two, one. Two quick, powerful robots. All talk is slightly the lighter but speedier. King Buxton seems to have more manoeuvrability with those spikes as well. Removable titanium spikes on King Buxton. Two large steel spikes at the front of All Talk. Being nudged ever backwards. Caught there on the edge of the pit of oblivion. One bash and two. They want to nudge him in there. In comes the kill a lot as well. With that lance. Oh, they're just hanging on! No, they're not all talk! Was just that in the end, and King Buxton is the winner! King Buxton! Take the podium! King Buxton! You must quick it out in the arena. All that hard work, all that effort, all that time, all that money, you're through to the series semi-finals, how do you feel? It's not bad, is it? It's not <laughs> bad, is it? You don't sound very excited. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, give them a round of applause! Warning all countries, defend yours, yours. You're being invaded by robot wars. Bye bye. We'll be back. Thanks. Bigger motors, bigger motors next year. Good, good on you. What do you say to everyone else thinking about going into the series semi final? Mm, it's going to be very, 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 very interesting. Oh, I can't wait myself.